it's a few minutes early, but that's okay. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm so glad y'all are here. It's so good to see people in person. I haven't done an in-person presentation in like a year and a half. So thank you for letting me get readjusted to this experience <laughs> with y'all. Um, but I'm really excited to be here. I hope that y'all are excited to be here and we're really excited about next week. Class is starting and hopefully getting seeing some people on campus because I have missed that. So, um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Erin Gutierrez and I am a student counselor here at UHD. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. You don't have to know all of that, but um, I have um, put together this presentation for y'all just to, it's important to kind of sit down and remember when we're walking into something big like that's about to happen is that we need to kind of recognize we need to take some time for ourselves. It's very, very easy to like put that at the bottom of the list and not prioritize that. So I really want this to be an interactive presentation. Um, I, of course, have a PowerPoint, but I really wanna hear from y'all. I wanna hear your experiences. I wanna hear kind of how y'all are doing um, and just encourage y'all to speak out if you feel comfortable, of course, and feel safe to do so. Um, I'm not gonna pressure you, but it, gets, it goes better when people you know, participate. But, um, so the title of my presentation is Taking, it's on my screen, Taking care, Time to Take Care of You, Gators, You Are Worth It. And I put Gators, You Are Worth It because it's very easy for us to not think that you know, taking care of ourselves is worthwhile or important. And so I hope my goal for today is for you to walk away recognizing like, hey, this is something I gotta do for myself in order to get through this semester, okay? Are you on board? What do y'all think? Let's hear some cheers or something from the, all right, hey, I like it, all right. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I want y'all to think on a scale of one to 10. I want you to think about your current stress level. So one being not stressed at all, 10 being like totally stressed to the max. And I just want you to kind of think internally what that number would be. Just take a second just to kind of think about it, check in with yourself. And just kind of keep that in the back of your head. All right, so now what I wanna do is take a mindful moment with you. And I'm gonna probably do this a couple of times throughout the presentation because slowing things down Taking some deep breaths is one of the best things that you can do for yourself in the moment. It's free, which is great, because I love you know, going to get massages, but not always a doable thing, right? But deep breaths are free. No one knows you're doing it, because you know, it's a normal thing we're doing, and you can do it anywhere. So um, what I'd like for you to do, if you feel comfortable, to close your eyes. If not, you can totally keep them open. That's, that's more than okay. And I wanna do some, some deep breaths with you. Now, when we're taking deep breaths, there is a way to do it that's the most helpful. And it's thinking about, it's breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle, if you think about it that way. Um, so I wanna practice something called four, seven, eight breathing with y'all. So that means we're gonna take a deep breath as far into our diaphragm as we can, and we're gonna take a four count and then we're gonna hold it for seven counts, and then we're gonna blow out a candle, right, for eight counts. And I'm gonna have y'all do that just a couple of times um, with me, if you don't mind, and you know, then we'll check in, okay? All right, so close your eyes. We're gonna breathe in through our nose for four counts. We're gonna hold it for seven. And we're gonna breathe out for eight. Breathe in for four. Hold it for seven. And breathe out for eight. Now as you're continuing to take, and now you can just kind of start taking deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth at comfortable pace. And I want you to start thinking about inhaling peace and calm. I want you to like say that to yourself as you're doing this. So 
I'm inhaling peace and calm, and I'm exhaling tension and anxiety. <sighs> there it goes. That I'm inhaling peace and calm, and I'm exhaling tension and anxiety. Okay, I heard someone do something really awesome over here, which was they blew out really like hard. Um, and I think someone said, did I do it right? And they did. <laughs> so, so when you do that, it's called ujjayi breath. And that is basically kind of like fire dragon breath. They do that in yoga. Um, and that kind of helps get rid of some of that tension. So now I'm going to check in with y'all again. I want you to think back to that 1 to 10 scale that I had you think about before. And I want you to assign a number again for how you feel right in this moment. Okay, so think about, so from one to 10, how stressed are you right now? And I'm gonna ask for a brave volunteer um, who did this experience, and if you feel comfortable telling me what your number was before and after, did it change, how was this experience? Anyone, I got one person back here. Oh, actually, her and then you. <laughs> Okay. In the okay. <laughs> so a five, two, a three. Other people? Seven to a five. What about any Zoom folks? Anybody? Or other people in the room? Anyone brave enough to kind of share what they noticed when they did that with their body? Your shoulders, they relaxed? Okay, you felt them kind of drop maybe a little bit. What about you? Your Apple Watch told you, all right, that's great. Your heart rate dropped, which is the whole point, right? We're slowing our roll. Anyone else? Yes, so a lot more present, right? Anyone else want to share before we move on? So I like to do this at the beginning because I want you all to see how easy that was. For several people, it dropped like two or three numbers in just a moment. And when we're in the middle of a stressful situation, right, we're in the middle of a test and we feel our anxiety kind of like creeping in and I want you all to remember like, hey, I can take five seconds and do this really simple thing and get myself in the present, thinking about what I got in front of me and that's where I've got control, okay? so. Even checking in with yourself and recognizing the progress you're making is really helpful. All right, so we call these reset and recenter moments. Um, this is an, I'm gonna, actually this presentation is just a lot of different techniques and tools, so I want y'all to walk away with those. So, um, so reset and recenter is when we start to recognize we're overwhelmed. Can y'all, can y'all like, I can totally tell when I'm overwhelmed. What about other people? Do y'all have certain things that happen with your body that tells you you're, go you're getting to that space? Anyone have anything they want to share that happens for them? Heart racing. Heart racing. Headache. Headache. Yeah, for sure. For me, I start pacing. I can tell, like, I just, I can't sit still when that happens for me. As you can tell as I'm, like, doing this up here, you know. Um, but so one of the, the really great techniques that you can do is bringing yourself into the present. I know she shared that earlier, is that if we're finding ourselves stuck in our head and we're thinking about everything that happened yesterday, we're thinking about everything we got to do later today, think about, you know, what's my future going to look like at the end of this experience, right? We are just so all up in our head. And in reality, the only place that you have control is in the present. You know, that's really where we have control. And when we're stressed and anxious, it's about all about control. When we feel out of control, that's usually when anxiety takes over. So if you can just take, your, take a minute to take a deep breath and just focus on where you are in the moment, then we can shift away from like all the, you know, SHIT that we're thinking about to stuff that is in front of us, okay? So one way to do that that's really helpful are what we call grounding techniques. And one that I will usually encourage students to do is, you know, if you're sitting in a chair or you're sitting anywhere, you know, think about your five senses. 
what can I see right now? So like I see y'all in front of me. I see, you know, camera back there. I see the periodic table of the elements at a wacky angle over here. You know, I see smiles. I see things like that. I, I smell cleaning, cleaner, you know, I smell hand sanitizer, which is like the scent of 2021, you know. So I, you know, I hear laughs, I hear sighs, I hear those things, right? And by grounding myself in the present and, you know, kind of attending to all of that, I'm able to say, okay, here I am in this moment and what can I do right now to take care of myself? What can I do to feel better and have some control in this moment. Because I can't change what's gonna happen in two years, but I can make myself do something right now to feel a little bit better in this moment, okay? So that's one thing that I really, you know, trying to stay in the middle where your body is present and your mind is present. So just a, a real quick little plug for uh, student counseling. So it's important to know that y'all have access to this you know, being a student, it's no additional cost. You get up to five sessions per issue, and there is no issue too big or too small to come and see us about. You know, here's just some things that people might come and see us about, but by no means is this any exhaustive list. You know, you can come and see us because you want to work on goals. You can come and see us because you're struggling with something. And, you know, the great thing about counseling is that we provide a non-objective, I mean, an objective, non-judgmental feedback to you. We're not, you know, we're not your friend, you're not your, you know, parent <laughs> that's, that's giving you all the advice, right? We're working with you in the moment to help provide support and to maybe look at things a little bit differently that might serve us, okay? And so it's already, you know, it, part of what you pay, so you may as well utilize it. I have a question back there? So this is going to be, this is more short-term kind of solution-focused counseling. So, you know, we might see somebody for a couple of issues in a semester. Um, but, you know, part of, if, if somebody needs more intensive, like, long-term counseling, then part of our role is to connect you with resources in the community that can serve that need. Um, whether that, if, if, if you don't have insurance or if you have insurance, we can find you um, some, some places in the community that can see you. Okay. All right, so moving on. This is just an example of our handout. Um, I put there, she actually put it in the back if you wanna take it as you leave, but of course you can always take a, a screenshot. The thing that I also want y'all to be aware of is we do have walk-in hours on a daily basis um, from 10 to 11 and from two to three. So if there's ever like you're having a really rough day and you just need to like come and talk to someone for a few minutes, you can always walk in and it's first come first serve and be seen by a counselor, okay? And right now we're doing telehealth too, so it isn't just in person. If you wanna call, then you can talk to us for a few minutes. Good question? They don't roll over. They end at the end of the semester, um, but the next semester, as long as you're enrolled, you're eligible for an additional five. So if you do start later in the semester, then you know you can get your three in and then immediately start your five for the next. But no, they don't roll over in that way. That's just really hard to track and stuff for us. Any other questions before we move on? You can do Zoom, um, you can do uh, phone, or we can do in person, you know, kind of social distance. But um, uh, we have a lot of students that are doing Zoom right now. That's primarily what I think students are comfortable with. Um, and I encourage Zoom because then we can like actually talk without masks, you know, and part, so much of communication is, you know, nonverbal. <laughs> so it just makes things a little bit easier. Yes. 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 So you would be assigned to a therapist and you would continue with that therapist. And if y'all come back in another semester, we always try to match you up with that same counselor so that you don't have to like start over from scratch. I know that that can be tough. All right. Um, and so I just put this up here because I like to say the struggle is real. I am not by any means saying that y'all have, you know, it's, it's hard coming in here. Y'all got other things on your plate besides academics, am I right? 
How many of y'all have other responsibilities besides school, right? Okay, everyone in this room, right? We've got work. We've got family. Some of us have kids running around. You know, you've got a lot of other responsibilities, and the balance can be so hard to manage. So just being aware that, you know, I put these up here because I want you to kind of check in with yourself as I'm talking about them. What might be one of the ones that you struggle with more? For some, they just have so many, like, things taking their attention <laughs> that it's hard to find balance. For some, maybe it's boundaries. You're one of those people that always says yes and, you know, is reluctant to say no, and then all of a sudden they don't have time for themselves. You might be somebody that has FOMO, right? I'm hearing that a lot right now, the fear of missing out, is that, you know, if because, because we've been in such a bizarre world <laughs> for so long, socializing looks totally different than it used to. And so I'm hearing a lot of that right now. For some, it's priorities. You know, you're putting your schoolwork on the back burner. You're, you have after hours things that kind of pop up. Um, and it's hard to kind of prioritize your time. And then for some of us, it's just really difficult to relax, whether that's finding time. And the other thing I put on here that I think we have to talk about is technology fatigue. You know, Zoom, Zoom fatigue is a real thing. <laughs> and so many of us are so tired of interacting through that that it is something that makes it difficult to relax because that used to be how a lot of us relaxed, right? We used to talk to people. We used to go on the computer and watch things. And now it feels like we're, it's all like blurred, right? So it's important to know that you don't have to have a mental, oh, now I see it up here. You don't have to have a mental health condition to take care of your mental health. That's so important. Is mental, you know, just think about, you know, um, diabetes, cancer, um, heart conditions, right? We don't wait until we're in stage four to go get help, right? Like once we start kind of recognizing the symptoms, we, we reach out to doctors, we try to figure out what's going on, and we, we, you know, follow some treatment. The same thing you have to kind of start thinking is, is mental health too. And this year, mental health has been stretched like it has never been stretched before. I will just say that hands down. I have, you know, everyone is struggling with this right now. And it's a hot topic for a reason. And so it's just really important to start recognizing you got to start looking for the signs for you and know that it's okay to reach out for some help. So what do y'all think about that? Does that bring up anything for y'all? All right. How difficult has this year been, <laughs> right? I'm gonna, I know I'm, I keep saying it, but it's, you know, it's true. And I like this because it is so important to understand that if we recognize that we're struggling, it's not a reflection of something we did wrong, right or wrong. It's not a reflection of our capability. It's just accepting how things are, okay? And so it's important when you're going through this process that you be kind to yourself. Compassion, right? Self-compassion. I am one of those that I am so hard on myself if I'm not perfect, and I can be really, really mean to myself. And has anyone else kind of feel like they do that? They're really, really hard on themselves, and if you really sat, sat and listened to your, how you talk to yourself, you'd be like, ooh, you know, like, I would never say that to a friend, but hell, I can say it to myself, you know, like, right? if we really think about that. So it's important for you to have compassion for yourself. That there is, no, there is not a playbook for what has happened this past year, and we still don't have one, right? We, every day is different, and so being able to stay in the present and roll with what's happening and telling yourself, I'm just doing the best I can today to get through the day is so important. Because um, if we get so stuck on how things were pre-COVID, or how things should be, then we just stay stuck and we're always disappointed. But if we can accept, you know, this reality kind of sucks, but it is what it is, and what am I going to do today to take care of myself, we're able to be so much more proactive. All right, so we talked a little bit about mind-body connection. I know a couple people brought up some things about how they feel it in their body, like tension in their body. But I put this up here because I want you all to just start being aware 
of when things might, things might be taking a turn for you, when you might be noticing that you're getting stressed out or overwhelmed. Um, you know, for some people, they really feel it in their body. I know someone had shared that. Um, some people start to recognize they can't focus. Some people start to recognize that they're being, having angry outbursts or like way more irritable than they usually are. Um, you're recognizing that your routines that you used to do, maybe you're not doing as much anymore. You're starting to recognize you're maybe drinking more than you used to. I mean, I, I think I saw a statistic that, you know, um, alcohol sales went up like five hundred, three or five hundred percent over this past year because that's how people are coping because that, that's what's available to them. So just kind of noticing when these things are happening, awareness is so important because that's when we know that we can do something and we can cope. Now, I'm probably going to age myself here, but <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever seen Legally Blonde before. Um, I see some nods. Um, they, just, they actually just had the 20th anniversary of this movie. And I like this because, it, well, A, it makes me laugh, but it, there's some truth to this, right? The, I don't know if y'all know this quote where she goes, exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. And I, say, I bring this up like as a joke, but at the same time, it's, it's true. If we're taking care of our, ourself, if we're taking care of our physical health, if we're taking care of our mental health, the likelihood of us engaging in unhealthy behaviors, the likelihood of us being more depressed is a lot less. So there is something to be said about this, but I just, I, I like, it just makes me laugh. So some, you know, something to make y'all laugh too, hopefully. So what do we do? We change the soundtrack. So how, you know, how many of us can think of an experience where we're listening to a song and we're like, okay, I'm noticing like my mood is starting to like go downhill with this sappy song. Um, so what do we do, right? We turn it off and we change it, right? We put on our hype up music, you know, we go and work out, whatever it is. We have to do that with our thoughts. Um, so, you know, saying things, I, one thing I hear a lot, right, is when we start saying these things like, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm, this is way too hard for me. I can't do this. I'm never going to get it together. Um, I'm not good at this, right? We start kind of engaging in this really negative speak. But let's change how we say it because language is powerful. It's super powerful. And how we talk to ourselves and what we say to ourselves is powerful too. So being able to say, you know, I'll never be able to do this. Well, is that really true, right? Y'all have done lots and lots of things in your life. You know, probably that very thing that you're worried about plenty of times. But you're so focused on that one experience, you forget all of that. So being able to say, I'm doing the best I can right now. I've accomplished so much already. I got a lot done today. I know I'm capable of doing this. I've done it before. I will figure this out. So being able to talk yourself into a, this kind of more proactive place and more positive place is really important. And that's something small that you can do. And this really highlights resilience. What is resilience? Does anyone, anyone want to take a crack at what they think that means? Ability to be flexible. Others? Anyone on Zoom? I feel bad because I, I don't see them, but... Um, Resilience, what do y'all think? Never giving up. The ability to keep going. Especially in times we don't have any control, right? Because we don't have control over a lot of what happens in our life. Anyone else? I want y'all to take one minute, and I want you to think of a time that you were able to get through something really tough. Now, I'm not asking you to go super deep here because I, <laughs> you know, I don't want people to like, go into you know, PTSD or anything. But I want you all to think of a time when you were able to prove yourself wrong, that you were resilient, you thought you couldn't do it, but you did it. Just think about that for a second. I want you all to think of a memory and experience. Anyone want to share one? Learning English. That's huge. Yeah, so coming from French-speaking country to an English-speaking country. 
Any other examples? Okay. Oh, yeah. Doing a backflip back for sure. I can't do a backflip. I'm impressed. You know. So those things, I want you to keep those in your head. Because when we tell ourselves we can't do something, you now have evidence that you can. You have evidence that you're resilient. Because our fear can easily take over, right? And we can say, you know, I definitely can't get through that. But we don't have any evidence that we can't get through it. But what we do have evidence is that we can, right? And so bringing up these memories and reminding yourself of these moments where you were able to take on English, like to me the hardest language ever, that's huge. And that's when you take that and you remind yourself, you know what, I've got the chops. I can do a backflip. You know, I can do these things. Nobody says that I can't. Okay, I like this meme. So you wouldn't let this happen to your phone, right? Like <laughs> our phone going down, right? We see it going down when it switches to like low light and we're like, oh, we're in danger zone, right? We wouldn't let, we wouldn't let this happen to our phone. So don't let this happen to you either, right? Self-care is a priority, not a luxury. So that's like what I really want y'all to start recognizing is that scheduling, you know, relaxation, scheduling self-care into your life is, is a priority. It has to be up on the top of that list. It can't be the bottom, which is usually where I see it with most people, right? Like when something goes, it's usually our self-care but we've got to pump that up on the list. So how do we do that? So we got to build in breaks and relaxation into our life somewhere. So I just put some examples up there. By no means is this everything, but you know, being able to have something really tangible that you can do in the moment is really helpful in being able to take a break and relaxation. You have to plan it or you're not gonna do it. So like, for example, I brought a couple of things that were just on my desk. I have these things like available whenever I just need a moment. I've got like, I've got this little gator stress ball. I gave y'all all stress balls so you can have just something that like is easy for me to, to grab that I can touch and feel. I have this like ridiculous little pinwheel thing that sometimes I just like to spin and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Cause it just gets my mind off of things. I usually will have a snack nearby, right? So if I'm noticing like my energy levels going down, I'll just take a moment and eat a few goldfish and try to be really mindful about it and just kind of focus on that. And then I'm like, okay, I'm feeling a little better. I'm being renewed. Um, but for some, it might be shifting your attention, you know, watching something that's funny or listening to something that's funny. Um, for some, it might be attending to what gives you meaning. For, for some, that might be your faith or their religion, or their values, or whatever, you know, prayer, or whatever they find meaning with. You know, and being able to have things that smell good, that, you know, feel good, that taste good around are so important. So when, when the heck are we going to do this, right? Like, how many of y'all are thinking that question, right? Like, that's all great, Aaron, but I don't have any space for this in my life. We have to find space for it. Um, one of the things I hear the most is like, there is not a moment in my day to do this. And what I'll, have do, what I'll have people do is track their time. And usually at the end of a week of tracking their time, they're recognizing, oh, I'm spending a lot of time on, you know, Instagram, I'm spending a lot of time, you know, on Facebook or watching YouTube, you know. And we think we don't have any time, but we really do. We can take five minutes. We can find five minutes, but you have to be really intentional about it. Um, and, you know, I get that we got a lot going on. So taking a break, you got to time it. You know, um, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have been, like, stuck in the YouTube, like, stream that, like, I started with a three-minute video, and then, like, an hour later, I've watched, like, six, right? What the heck just happened to my time? So if you have to set, you know, an alarm or something to get yourself there, you know, to stop, um, do it. But be, and be realistic about your time. So, you know, how many of us have things that happen to us throughout the week where people ask us to do things, right? And so we start to say yes, 
and all of a sudden, all that time and space that we had for ourselves like dwindles and dwindles and dwindles, and then all of a sudden, you got nothing. So now, I want you to really try to recognize that, you know, saying yes to those things is, is taking time away from you. And I'm not saying you say no to everything, but it's okay to say no sometimes. Give yourself permission to do that because then you can still save that time for yourself. So here's just some other, like I just said, some other ideas about, you know, what works best for you. So know your prime time. Um, that's really important when we're kind of creating schedules. Um, I am a morning person. I'm not a night person. Some people are night people. Um, and so I know that in order for me to do my best work, my most focused work, I got to do it in the morning. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just my reality. And it's knowing myself. And kind of, you know, recognizing that it's about quality of time, not quantity of time. So when we're, when we're strapped for time, we got a lot to balance. A lot of it is about where we do that we'll notice that we'll spend a lot less time and energy doing things if we're doing it in times that work for us. So creating playlists for workflow, attending class, you know, I know that that's really difficult right now, but, you know, taking notes, submitting your assignments, utilizing campus resources like counseling, plug, plug, um, or, you know, we're also in the same suite as student health. You know, if you need to get a, a checkup or something like that. Um, get involved in, in whatever way you can on campus. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to visualize yourself acing a test or getting a good grade on a paper. If we can visualize ourselves doing it, it, like, we can kind of go back to that. There is not, like, nothing better than like, thinking about turning in that last paper right at the end of a semester and being able to walk out and be like, oh, I'm done. I got this. I did the best I can. Um, and saying yes to saying no. I kind of talked about that earlier. I got to look at my time here. OK. So there is lots and lots of apps. Um, I'm not saying you have to use an app. But I like to put it up here because, you know, if we're on our phones, you know, maybe this is something that you can do instead of, you know, spending that time on Instagram. Maybe give yourself five minutes to work on one of these other apps. Um, I encourage y'all to take a picture of this. Does anyone utilize any apps or any kind of like mindfulness things on their phone? Headspace? Any other? Calm? What is it that y'all like about those? Yeah. Right? It's so accessible. All it is is pushing, like, a button on our um, phone. So I'm, like, one of those, like, I'll just tell myself, I'm one of those, like, National Geographic reading types. And so I love the animal live streams on explore.org. Um, so I put that on there because, to me, like, there's nothing more relaxing than watching some of these really cool cameras of places um, and seeing you know, just being able to get lost in that for a minute. Okay. So now I'm going to give you all a little assignment. Um, so this is a self-care checkup. So we've talked about how do we know um, when, wh how, do, how do we become aware, right? Like what do we need to look for when we're starting to get drained, when we're starting to get overwhelmed? And so I want you all to remember this self-care checkup. So I want y'all, if you can write it down, I encourage. Um, if not, that's cool, but just kind of think about it. I want you to think about three things that drain you. I want you to think about three things that refuel you. And I want you to think about three relationships which support, challenge, and encourage you to be your best. And that's important, right, because it also challenges us, like, to have these kinds of relationships. Um, so I want y'all to, I'm going to literally give y'all a couple minutes to just kind of think about that. And then if anyone's comfortable to share, um, I will definitely ask that. But I want to take a moment because if y'all don't take it now, y'all might walk out and not do it. <laughs> so I'm going to make you do it. No, I'm just playing. Uh, but just think about it. And with the things that drain you, how, I want you to go a step further and ask, how can I reduce that? 
the things that refuel you. How can I increase that? Okay? So I want you, I'm going to spend a, just a few minutes thinking about that. I know people are still writing, but does anyone want to maybe share? They feel comfortable and safe. Does anyone want to share what they wrote? All right. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else brave to share? Okay, perfect. Okay, we got another traffic. <laughs> common, th common theme here. Mm, unscheduled activities. Is what? Baking. Okay, so the act of baking. Walking, that's a great one. All right. Hard, but fulfilling, I'm imagining at times. Okay. Um, do we have any Zoom folks? Great. Going near the water, the beach, or the lake. Any other, any other thoughts? So this is something really simple that you can do on a daily basis, right? Like what, am, am I noticing I'm like super stressed out? What are, what's draining me right now? What do I need to do to refuel myself? Um, who do I need to reach out to um, to maybe give me some extra support? And um, ask them to help keep you accountable if that's what you need. You know, that's what a healthy relationship should do. You know, it's a give and take. And if you need to ask them to, you know, to do that, then do that. Um, if, if there are times when you feel really low, you know, and you're struggling to, like, think about, well, what's, what's going good for me or what's good about me right now, ask, ask your support system. Ask them for three qualities they appreciate about you. What do they notice? You know, ask your coworker that, you know, you shared about. Like, what is it that you, why did you encourage me to go to school, right? It's okay to ask for those things. So this is just some things to be mindful of. You know, if, if you're starting to notice that these big things are happening, if you feel that you need help, don't try, try to talk yourself out of it, okay? Just, you know, feel free to come and speak with us. And, you know, just, tr just give it a shot. If after one session it ain't for you, that's okay. But then you've told yourself you've given it a chance, okay? Here... One of the things that I hear about the most is like if you are noticing multiple people are saying like, hey, I'm noticing you're not like your energy level isn't as, as good or you're being a little more irritable like lately. That's what I hear a lot. Um, you know, when you, multiple people are kind of like checking in with you and worried about you, check in with yourself because usually there's something going on because um, a lot of the times we see the behaviors, we're showing behaviors that we don't recognize that we have. Um, if, of course, if you have thoughts of harming yourself, reach out for support. Those things happen, especially if you're struggling with depression and grief. Those are normal things that, that suicidal ideations are normal, but they don't have to be, you don't have to sit in them alone. So reach out to us. The phone number that we have, we have a 24-7 answering service. So I want you to feel comfortable to call that number at any time if you need to talk to somebody, okay? Um, so those are just some reasons that you might want to, you know, seek help. So I like this. Energy flows where your attention goes. So reset and refocus. I just want you all to keep reminding yourself of that. If you feel like the day 
is running away and your head is everywhere, just recognize that you're putting a lot of energy into things that aren't serving you. And where do I need to put energy to into something that refuels me, right? That um, I can reset and refocus on. I, this one I really like because it's a reminder. We get another shot at, the, at a day, right? Like, yeah, we may have a really rough day and we're going to have those. That's part of our reality. But you know what? You got another shot tomorrow. You got another shot to, to do something different, to try something different. If what you're doing isn't working, you got another day to try something different. And, and it's just also accepting that there are going to be things that like pop up, absurdities that will creep in. That's part of life, but they don't have to control you, right? You get to decide, I'm waking up this morning with peace and a high spirit, and I'm going to go about my day with that. So with that being said, do y'all have any questions or anything that you want to, we have about, what, four minutes? Any questions or anything that y'all want to share? What's a takeaway, maybe? Take some time for yourself. What else? What other things did y'all take away? Refocusing. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing what focusing we can like. Like I know for me, I I recognize. Oh, I left my coffee on the counter today. You know, it's. But at the, in the moment, you're we're moving so fast. If anything that y'all, I want y'all to take away, it's okay to like step back and slow your roll and to take some deep breaths and to refocus and get yourself into the present. That in and of itself will allow you to get, you know, a, a clear mind to be able to decide what's my next step in this moment. It's a really hard moment, but what's my next step? What can I do? Any other Being mindful in small tasks, yes. Somebody else had their hand up? Yes. Right. So taking advantage of your prime time, not leaving everything to like the, the time that is not your time, right? <laughs> like we can all think of those moments. And then we're like, oh, gosh, I have so much to do. Any other thoughts? Learning to say no. Not to be too hard on yourself. You can shift that, right? I saw another hand. It's something that can happen, right? It's when we're overwhelmed and we're just kind of, you know, we've got so much going on in our head. It's hard to stay focused. We get confused. Um, it, we get kind of going back and forth. That's a really normal thing to happen when we're stressed out. Um, and it's a normal thing to recognize that it's hard. And it's, you know, everything in our brain sometimes in those moments tells us to give up. But the question that I always encourage people to think about is how does that serve me right now? How does it serve me to give up in this moment? Is it going to help things? Is it going to make me feel better? Maybe for a second, but how will I feel after that moment? And saying, okay, so what, how can I feel different? How can I um, take care? Of, and maybe it's not doing that thing that you're supposed to be doing. But maybe it's taking those, that five minutes to take care of yourself instead, to like help you get through the rest of the day. Does that kind of answer your question? Okay. Any other thoughts? I know that we are in the last minute. Yes. Right, right. Nice plug. 
And, and I want you all to know, like, you know, I get counseling is kind of scary. You know, it's, it's especially if we, if, you know, there's a huge stigma against it that, I, that I'm constantly fighting against. But go to our website. We have a video on there that, you know, kind of helps you get an idea of what to expect. And, you know, I, I like these kinds of things because then I get to show you that, hey, we're not so scary and I do have a sense of humor. And, well, hopefully y'all think I have a sense of humor. I do. But, you know, that I, it's somebody that you can talk to, right, that can relate to, okay? I really appreciate y'all's time, and I hope that we get to see y'all this year. And, you know, we're going to be out. I'm going to be out at some of the tables at the week of welcome, so please come by, you know, talk with me. We have flyers in the back. But take care of yourself, and I appreciate all y'all's participation. Thank you.